If you spend much time in Google Analytics, you've probably seen a lot of referral spam popping up over the last year or so. Um, and what this is is just spammy websites that show up under your referrals um, purely for the intention of getting you interested in wondering who this referral is and clicking through to their site and then theoretically buying their service. They don't hurt anything. They're not hacking your site, but they'll make your analytics a mess. They'll make it look like you're getting more traffic than you really are. It'll mess up your bounce rate. You see our bounce rate on that is 96%. It'll, you know, most of them just hit your site to leave the little mark and take off. Um, it just messes things up. It's good to get it clean. Uh, we released a plugin a while ago that blocks a lot of it. If you search for GM block bots in the WordPress plugin directory, you'll find that. And that'll block probably 75% of it. We update it regularly with new ones. Um, you can see here on this football site example, uh, you can see all that traffic starting to pile up. We installed the plugin. It blocked most of it. The issue now is the ghost referrers that don't actually visit your site, and so they can't be blocked. Uh, they grab your Google Analytics code um, and ping it directly and just say, hey, Google, here we are. And so if, since they never come to your site, they can't be blocked on your site with any method, not with our plugin, not with HT Access, not with anything. The only way to stop them is filtering directly in Google Analytics. So um, get our plugin. That'll stop a lot of it, and that'll stop new ones coming. And I'll show you how to filter out all the rest um, and get your analytics nice and clean again. So what we'll do first is go into the admin section of analytics under the views. We're going to add some filters to this view. The issue with filters is you need to be very careful. If it filters out any data, that data is gone. You could remove the filter later, later, but anything you filtered out can't be retrieved. So what we'll do is create a second view um, just for the purpose of collecting all that raw data in case somehow we mess up. So we'll call it football refs raw data. Um, and this, this view is just going to exist just to collect everything else. You can have multiple views on an on a account, uh, both of them collecting data from the same site. Um, this way we'll have one that will just start today collecting just raw data. So if we somehow mess up the filter, you notice it weeks later, you can at least come to this raw data to see what happened. But now we'll switch back to our normal view and go into reporting. And what we want to do is find the valid host names in your analytics and make a list of those. Um, so what we'll do is go under Audience, Technology, Network, and pick a long period of time, at least six months or so, so you make sure we don't miss anything in here. Um, and then click host name at the top. And this will show all the host names that have visited your site. A lot of times you'll see a lot more spam in here. This site hasn't gotten too much of that spam in here, uh, but we'll, we'll at least be able to filter out four webmasters is certainly spam. The rest are legitimate, so we'll talk about that. Uh, Football Refs is the main site, so with W's and without. And then Pro Refs is another site of ours that is somewhat legit. It's a message board we use on there sometimes. And then Google user content is legit. That's for people that are translating your site into different languages. So you want to keep that one in. Everything else pretty much needs to go. Um, you may know if you have analytics elsewhere, if you have any um, other marketing tactics, any you know remarketing, that kind of stuff. You may see other legit sources in there. So do make note of them. Um, in this case, though, we only have a few. Uh, so what we'll do is pull up our notepad to start making a list. And the list needs to be done carefully. So again, we do want the Google user content. So we'll say Google user content slash dot com and then a pipe to separate them. And so then we want football refs. W's don't matter. WWW or not. Any, any subdomain will be counted in the main one. We'll do football refs slash dot com pipe and then pro refs slash dot com. And so that's our list. Um, your list can be as long as you need. Again, a lot of cases you'll have more if you have any remarketing or other, other places that are using your code legitimately. Um, but most of the ghost referrals either will leave a mark like four webmasters did or they won't supply um, a host name at all, in which case we can filter them out. And that's where you get a lot of that bogus direct traffic. Um, this will help take care of that. So now what we'll do, go back to analytics, keep that notepad handy. We'll go into analytics to the admin section. Um, and under our view, remember our original view, we have the raw one back there, but we're working on the original view. We'll go to filters. And so we're going to create a new filter. We'll call our filter anything you want, really. I call it valid host name filter, just to keep it clear in case I wonder later if we add more filters, I'll know what's going on. Um, and then just a couple important steps in here. We want to do a custom filter. We want to not exclude data. We only want to include. So we're going to say we're only going to count data that matches those host names. So we'll say we're going to include host names. And we'll pull up our notepad here and copy this link, paste it in. Um, and that's really all you need to do. You can see here there's a case sensitive button. So if you happen to have different cases that show up in your host name, just don't check this and it'll capture if people do capital F or whatever the case may be. And again, this captures all the subdomains as well. So we do pretty well there. Um, and then a great little tool they have is to verify this filter. So you can see it's going to show you what would have changed in the last seven days if you do this. So if we apply this filter, 
four webmasters is going to go from 88 to nothing, and nothing else will be changed. So perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So we'll save that. And the beautiful thing with this now, again, because we're only catching valid host names, any new ghost referrals that pop up will automatically be filtered out. The one catch is you need to be careful. If you, if you do start remarketing or doing other things that you do need to add valid host names for, you need to put them in here or they won't be captured. Um, it'll still work, but you won't see it in analytics, which can certainly be a big problem. And then one other little thing we'll do as well, while we're in here, we'll go to View Settings. And if we scroll down a little bit, Google has this bot filtering. Exclude hit, all hits from known bots and spiders. Um, doesn't seem to be super effective, but every little bit we can do will help. And certainly we don't want to have other bots in there. So we'll save that. Um, and that's it. That'll do the job for us. One more thing I would recommend, though, go back into reporting. And we want to make a note of what we did so later we can see what happened. So if you pull this little tiny drop down here, you can add an annotation. Um, we have these quite a bit on a lot of our client sites. If we do a big um, e-newsletter push and there's a big spike in traffic, we make a note of what happened. Or if a blog post goes viral or if something happens to cause the traffic to spike up or down, uh, we'll make an annotation so that way months later we can say, what was that spike again? And we can see the little note we left. So we'll create a new annotation with today's date and just say something like blocked a bunch more spam bots via filter. Because odds are, when we come back and look later, overall traffic's going to drop uh, because we started blocking these. But we can go back and see, oh, it's because we blocked the spam bots. And then we can look and say, OK, our organic traffic's still good. And you know, our legitimate traffic's still good. And we'll understand why we saw that drop. And we can act accordingly. Uh, but that's it. So if you have that filter in place, and then you install our plugin or something similar, um, you can see the list here of, of other bots that we block. Because these guys do provide valid host names because they visit your site. Uh, so we block them at the server level so they can't visit your site at all. Um, but again, there's a lot, a handful of good plugins like this. Ours we keep pretty simple where it doesn't call back to our server or anything. It's a simple plugin that simply blocks those. And we have new ones. You can update the plugin with the new ones. So there's no security hole. It doesn't, doesn't use many resources on your server. It seems to do a very good job. Um, but again, it can't stop the ghosts because they never visit the site. So if you set up the filter to block the ghosts, you're going to be in great shape and should have that pretty much taken care of. Uh, so yeah, let us know if you have any questions and good luck.